OK. We are finally ready to actually introduce bee trees. Considering that this is five, part five, or perhaps even part six, if you count part zero, in the series, uh, I guess we're probably ready. We're ready to actually get to bee trees, right? So we started with binary search trees. They're simple, but sometimes they're unbalanced. Next, we switched over to two, three trees, which are always balanced. But they're not quite as simple. Bottom up two, three, four trees are almost exactly the same as two, three trees, but they'd allowed us to shift over to top down two, three, four trees. And that gave us the sort of one pass insertion and deletion, though we didn't actually see deletion. So, should we stop there? Should we look at two, three, four, five trees or two, three, four, five, six trees or, you know, I don't know, six to 118 trees? Why would we want to care about higher, higher order trees? I mean, is there any reason to want them? Well, that's kind of what bee trees are. They're like two, three, four trees, except we're going to say they're sort of two up to two T trees, meaning each node can have anywhere from T up to two T children, okay? Just like two, three, four trees, they're bottom up and top down variants. We're gonna look at the top down variant here. And just to give you an idea, T might be a hundred. It might be quite large. T might be a hundred or larger, okay? Why do we want these? Uh, well, here's the deal. Eventually, as you have too much stuff in memory, you run out of memory. And probably this has happened to all of us, right? You got a bunch of things running on your machine and you open a few more things and all of a sudden like everything kind of grinds to a halt and maybe you even hear your disk like going crazy. You're swapping to, to disk. You're using disk as virtual memory and disks are just way slower than regular memory. So your performance takes a huge hit. So the idea of bee trees are, what if you have so much data that you can't store it all in memory? We're going to take a hit because we have stuff on disk, but can we sort of organize stuff on disk so that we don't take too bad of a hit? So here's the idea. Disks are slow, but they kind of are slow in two different ways. First, they have this sort of latency. Um, I just call that seek time. It might be made of two different aspects um, if, you, if you look more clear, closely into it. But I'm just gonna say sort of the latency is, for our, for our purposes, how long does it take to get your first bit of data when you go to disk? On the other hand, throughput is how fast does the data come to you once it started, right? I mean, um, how, what's the transfer rate of the disk once, once data is on its, on its way? So just these are probably ballpark, you know, current latency might be, you know, might be ballpark five milliseconds. We'll say it's five milliseconds. Um, and throughput, well, if you give me five milliseconds after the data is started, and you give me five milliseconds to sort of get as much data as I can, I might be able to get, say, ballpark half of a megabyte, okay? So the idea is, if you're already waiting five milliseconds just to get your first bytes of data, maybe it'd be worth waiting a little bit longer and getting half a megabyte of data. And this is how we actually read our disks. We read them in pages or in blocks, right? So we read in this big block of data all at once, one disk page. Because, you know, we already made the effort to go to the disk. Maybe we can get a whole bunch of stuff at once from the disk that will be useful for us. So we're actually going to organize our tree to correspond with pages on our disk. And when we read one page from the disk, that's going to correspond to a single tree node of our B tree. Okay? So what degree do we choose? Well, it kind of depends on what things we're storing and what are the size of disk pages? What are the disk characteristics, okay? Um, the next question is, you know, if we read in a thousand keys in some gigantic node at once, but you only look at 10 of them, is that good? Well, it actually is. I mean, you're, you're reading a thousand items instead of say one, 
that might only take, you know, that might only take twice as long to read than just finding one single key. And you're looking at using 10 of those items, so you're actually going to only have to go to the disk a tenth as many times. So that's pretty good, actually. It's sort of a big win, right? And so this is the idea. We have this sort of abstract node. And in that abstract node, it has a whole bunch of different key values. And just like a 2, 3, 4 tree, except in this case, it's a 200 to 400 uh, node. You know, it has, it has, you know, say 133 keys, 134 children. And it reads in from disk that one node all at one time. Now, underlying that node, when you actually bring it into memory, you probably want to actually have the data of the node stored in a little data structure. What data structure? I don't know, maybe a 2-3 tree or a 2-3-4 tree or a B tree or, you know, some sort of balanced binary tree. And that way, you don't have to sort of do this, you know, if you have 500 values in your, in your tree node, you don't want to do a linked list search to figure out where you're supposed to go. Instead, oh, I can do this sort of, you know, look at a few values. Like if I'm, if I'm trying to find 57, oh, I come to the root of this little tree here. It has a 20, I compare to 20. I go to the right, I compare to 42 and 65. I go to the uh, middle node there because I'm bigger than 42, but less than 65. I come to 59, I'm less than 57. And that sends me down to some new big gigantic node, which would be like, you know, over here somewhere, right? You want to pick out the next node from this tree after doing a few actual comparisons with keys from our tree, right? So if we want to get sort of a ballpark B tree comparison, let's just imagine that you have, say, one kilo children, right? Uh, you have a, uh, you have a, uh, one about a thousand children per node. Let's just say that maybe that's maybe that's a little bit high, but <clears throat> we imagine that we store the root in memory all the time because every time you access this tree, everybody starts at the root, right? So you basically don't have to look at the root of the tree. If you access three levels down, that gives you access to uh, 1,024 cubed different disk pages. So by having three disk page lookups, you now have access to, you know, a, a billion different disk pages. And if you were willing to, you know, have one other node access, you can now get to like a trillion different disk pages. So you might have, say, three or four disk accesses instead of what might be 30 or 40 disk accesses were you to store this as, say, a balanced binary tree of some sort, right? You might be going 30 or 40 levels deep in your tree, in your binary tree, okay? If you have, like, 40 disk accesses at 5 milliseconds each, uh, it's like a fifth of a second. A fifth of a second is noticeable, right? Google would be much less popular if you had to wait a fifth of a second for a result, because let's be honest. Who has that kind of time? All right, so I'll actually give the formal definition of a B tree in the next lecture, and uh, thank you.